G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're looking at how to convert Revit floor plans in Power BI. Um, so quite a hot topic at the moment I've noticed in, um, in the architectural community with Power BI. So Power BI is an interactive data visualization tool. You may have seen it on a previous video, which I released about a week and a half ago, um, which relates to converting data out of Revit. Um, essentially, it can accept a lot of data types, but today we're going to be looking at Excel data specifically. Um, and the best part about Power BI is that it's a, it's a free program. Um, so you can just download Power BI Desktop off the Microsoft Store or off their website um, and go from there with it. Um, so we're looking today at something a bit like this. So a report um, that deals with rooms uh, out of a Revit model. And we're gonna visualize the rooms on a floor plan. Um, and the great thing about this workflow is it lets you highlight and isolate those rooms on a floor, pl a floor plan. You can see here, for example, I've just selected a department of my building called Common Entry, and it only highlights the rooms that relate to that department. So it's a really great way to guide people through your report and tie it back to your model. So you can see these areas here are all changing as well. So you can see that my, my table is reducing to suit just that area. So I can see how much area is in that zone. So I'm gonna show you how to do that as well today. We're gonna be using a add-on uh, for Power BI, which is free called the Synoptic Panel, um, which is a tool you can download from the hyperlink at the top um, from OKViz. Okay and it's really easy to use. I'll show you how to use that as well, uh, but that's critical to the workflow. And there's also a website called Synoptic Design, which is a, a website that we're gonna use to process images into a shapefile, which can enable us to bring our floor plan into Power BI uh, through this workflow. So we're gonna need a Revit floor plan or floor plans um, and room schedules that relate to all the rooms on that floor plan. We'll need Excel to process the data and we'll, we'll look at an optional Dynamo script, which can save you a bit of time in terms of getting your rooms out of Revit um, into a format that we can work with in the Synoptic panel. And then we need Power BI as well. So we'll need some room data as well. So make sure that uh, whichever model or plan or schedule you're working with, it definitely has to have room numbers because they're, they're the critical way of us processing the data between Revit and Power BI. Obviously it's better if your rooms have names, they'll have to be on a level. Um, give them a department or a category. So are they circulation, are they bedrooms, for example, um, so that you can group some rooms together and test working with a bunch of rooms at the same time in Power BI and maybe populate your finished data as well. So are the walls made of plasterboard or masonry is the ceiling plasterboard, for example, so that we can look at slicing some of those options in tables in Power BI as well. So today's model is just a little demonstration model I've been setting up for my channel um, to give my videos a more high resolution model versus the basic Autodesk file. So it's almost a point where I can use it for training. Um, don't ask for it because I won't give it out. It's a personal model, um, so feel free to use one at home. Um, I notice a lot of the time that seems to be the most popular question on these sorts of videos, but I don't really understand why because it's better to learn Revit from a model you build yourself rather than someone else's, right? Um, so essentially we're looking at the ground floor at the moment. We could look at every floor, but I just want to keep it simple today. So the ground floor is basically divided with a courtyard and there's a whole bunch of rooms around there. Um, there's a common living area, a rear entry area with a bathroom and a laundry, and there's an area where the, the grandparents live in this house, and then there's a carport area. So we're going to look at dividing that room data up as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's actually set up the, the Power BI floor plans. So um, the first thing we need to do is go into Revit, as you'd expect. So I'm just gonna jump in my Revit model. And what I've done at the moment is I've got a ground floor plan, um, but I've set up a view template that basically takes away a few categories uh, that we're gonna hide. Cause this, this power floor plan is obviously far too detailed um, for a data visualization report. So I've just set up a view, a view template, which hides a few things. You can see it turns off the color scheme. It turns off all the tags, all the grids, all the annotations turned off. And really all I'm left with is walls, basic details, stairs, um, just enough that would make sense from a reporting perspective. And what we need to do with this plan is we need to export that as an image. So we're going to go up to export images and we'll pick a PNG file. PNG is usually the best image format for quality I find. Uh, we'll make it uh, say 4096 in the horizontal direction. I usually recommend trying to pick a power of two um, because that way you know your pixels will always resolve to a factor of two. Um, and we'll just save that to our desktop and we'll just call that Power BI underlay ground floor. I'm just going to overwrite the file I already have from this workflow. And essentially that should give you something that looks a little bit like, like this. So it's got, um, I guess, uh, enough detail that in a data report we can see what we want. But the problem with this image is that in Power, in this synoptic panel website, it's not going to be ideal 
to work with. Um, so essentially, if I go to Synoptic Panel or Synoptic Designer, sorry, and I bring in uh, an actual copy of that image. Um, so in this case, I believe it's this file here. Um, basically, you just click and drag. Um, so the way Synoptic Panel works is you can marquee areas that it finds. So for example, if I want this, this driveway ramp, I can pick it and you'll see it got it pretty much right. But let's say I want my kitchen. See how it doesn't really work? I really want it to be this whole zone, but because there's casework visible and there's no door, door line here, it picks the wrong area. So essentially we're gonna create a simpler version of our floor plan, which only contains the room boundaries. And then we're gonna replace this image using change image instead. Uh, that way we can pick the right boundaries we want and then substitute the image with our underlay image itself. So we're just gonna clear that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just jump back into Revit. And in our model, I've basically created a, a new view. Um, and all it has is the, the crop boundary so that when I export this image, it's the same size as the other one that we've exported. Um, but I've got a little Dynamo script that I've built, which basically converts all my room boundaries into filled regions um, in order to be able to just isolate the rooms themselves as shapes. So the way the Dynamo script works, um, and this isn't essential, this is just a, a shortcut. Um, I collect all the rooms in my model and I get their level parameter using get parameter value by name. And then I cross check it against the name of a level that I pick. And this script runs through Dynamo Player. So if I right click this, you'll see I've set this to an input. From there, I'm basically filtering all my rooms to make sure that I only get the ones at the level that I want. I'm then getting their finish boundary as a curve. And then I'm basically generating a filled region in a view of my choice, which in this case will be the Power BI floor plan. And the filled region type is one that I pick as well. So in this case, I've just made one called Power BI filled region. So if I just close this down, I'll run this through, through Dynamo Player instead. So I'll just open up Dynamo Player and then I'm just gonna go to my inputs. So essentially the inputs are the filled region, the view and uh, the level. So in this case, we've got two levels to deal with. We have the carport level and the ground floor level, which we're both showing on the ground floor. So we're gonna generate filled regions for both of those areas. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick my Power BI fill type, noting that the boundary line will be of the type thin lines. So you also need to turn on thin lines in your view template. Um, we're gonna make the regions in the view, plan, the view for Power BI ground floor. And first we'll generate rooms for ground floor. And you'll see that that's just generated a, a filled region for each room. So instead of seeing all that detail, we just see the filled regions. And from there, I'm also just gonna generate the carport rooms as well. And there we go. Um, I've got a couple of overlapping rooms. So I have a plant underneath my courtyard. What I'm gonna do in this case instead is I'm just going to make it a smaller zone so that I only see the little piece of the plant that's exposed under the courtyard in my floor plan. And you can also take time to clean up your, your plans. So you can always simplify some of your regions if you like. So you can get rid of certain elements that you don't want to be uncovered. So I, I could take these, these elements out if I wanted to as well, for example. So I can just really quickly tidy up my, my floor plan essentially. Because these are all gonna be the outlines of the shapes in Power BI as color fills eventually. Okay, so at that point you can also export that uh, fill and also you can draw those filled regions yourself if you want you don't have to use dynamo to create them But as you can see dynamo is quite quick um, at doing that if you build the script that way I can always send that script to people if they need it, um, but hopefully it's a pretty easy one to build at home Okay, so from that point we're, we're pretty, almost done with Revit um, But the last thing we need is a room schedule. So in my model I've basically set up a whole bunch of room data already for these rooms. So I'll just go to my GA plan template so I can see all my rooms again. So for example, if I take this entry space here, you'll see it has a name, a number, an area. I've also given it a ceiling finish, a wall finish, and a floor finish as text. I've also given it a department, which is what my color fill scheme is highlighting in this view. Um, and it has a name and a number, and it's placed at a level naturally. So what I've done is I've set up a room schedule, in this case, just for ground floor and below. And it's essentially got all of that data. So in terms of what I've done to set this schedule up is I've added all those fields to my schedule fields. 
Um, I've got a filter saying the level must be below uh, the level above ground floor, which in this case is called level 1A. And I'm sorting and grouping by level, um, but I'm not sorting in any other way. And I'm also generating a total as well, but you don't have to, that's just so the area all totals. Uh, but that, that's not necessary for Power BI. Other than that, I'm not really formatting anything in particular. I am telling my area to calculate totals, but again, not necessary for Power BI. Okay, so from that point, we just go to export. Whilst we're in our schedule view, we go to reports, schedule. And you just export your schedule as a TXT file first, and we'll process that through Excel. Cool. So at this point, we're pretty much done with Revit. Um, all we need to do is just take note of our room numbers and our room names, because we're going to need to manually populate those in the Synoptic Designer. Um, there are workflows where you don't have to manually do this, uh, but they're a lot more complicated. So I just wanted to show a really simple one today, um, just to make it easy for other people. Okay, so we're going to look at um, first our Excel data. So we're just going to open that uh, TXT file. So we're just going to browse to its location. In this case, I've saved it to my desktop because I like not working well. Okay, so we're just gonna go here and you need to set um, your file types to all files so you can see TXT files. And it's gonna ask you how you wanna separate your data. So we need to go delimited and we need to separate by tab. And from there you can go finish and essentially your data should look a little bit like this once it fits on my screen. There we go. So what you need to do is delete the top row, which is the title, delete the middle row, which separates the header from the data. And if you have any totals, just get rid of those as well. And you'll need to take out any area measurement references. So I'll just copy this little meter squared and do a find and replace with control F and I'm gonna replace it with nothing. So these at this point, this, these all become numbers essentially. Um, you'll notice here some of your numbers may, or your room numbers might think they're numbers if they don't have text in them. That doesn't matter, that's not a problem. So at that point, we just want to save it as, and we'll just save it as a workbook uh, to a similar location, because essentially this is the data we're going to put into Power BI. So I'm just going to go to Excel workbook, and we'll just call this uh, actual room data. And we'll save. We'll just minimize that for now, just in case. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, um, I know I'm sort of jumping all over the place a little bit, but there's a lot of steps to this to go through. So we're gonna take, um, sorry, I just realized my banner was gone. Um, we're gonna take our, our image files. So what we're gonna do is just open to the location they're in. And the first thing we can do is drop in our Power BI outlines, which is the one that's generated from our field regions, which you might recall looks a little bit like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna click and drag that in here. And all you need to do at this point is just pick all your areas. And it's up to you if you wanna number and name them as you go, but essentially you magic wand. And at that point, you've got a chance to set the number and you do get another chance as well. And you can also name your area as well. So it's a manual process, um, not, not great, but for now, this is a simple workflow. And as you go through, you can keep picking all your areas that you need. And because you've made them all separate filled regions using Dynamo or similar, it's really quick, um, really easy. So at that point you can actually go back and you can use this selection tool. Let's say we want to set our carport, which is CP01 carport. Um, so from there you'd go through and do all 20 rooms or however many you have. Obviously if it's a really big building, it's going to take a long time. So you might want to look at alternative workflows using a data visualization program such as Python. Um, but I'm not going to go to that level of detail today just because it's very complicated, even, even for me. Um, so at this point, I'd have to go through a number and name these manually. I've actually got one here that I've just finished um, because what you do once you've finished with that process is you just go to change image and you just pick your underlay instead. Um, and at that point, all your areas are still there. And because your images are the same size, it holds onto that same scale. So now you don't have to worry about not being able to pick those areas. So that's how you can actually get the desired image for your underlay. So that can be a, a very complex image if you so want it to be. But I've got one here that I've just finished at that point and I've named and numbered all my spaces to suit. So all you have to do at that point is go export to Power BI and it brings up this little window and you just go save as on this image. Save image as, and you just save it to where you want it to go. So we'll just save it as final ground floor for Power BI. Cool, so we've just got our, our shape file at that point. Um, so we're pretty much done with the synoptic designer now. 
So now we actually get to go into Power BI itself. Um, so the fun part. Okay, so we're gonna get our data first up here and we're gonna get our Excel data. And we're just gonna get that Excel file. Okay, so that should bring up a window uh, that prompts us which table of data we want to use. Um, in this case, we're using the first, so should bring it up shortly. Cool, so we're just gonna get our room schedule table and you'll see our data coming through here. Okay, so this should come through. You may get some warnings or errors, so address those if you see them. Um, but typically, if it's coming from Revit, you shouldn't expect to see too many errors. Cool, so you can see that our data's now appeared over here. So we have our area and our number and name and finishes and department, which is great. So we'll just make a little table of data first. And let's just base it on number, name, level, and department, and area. We'll put area after name. Okay, so you can see we've got basically our room schedule in Power BI now, which is great. What we're also going to do is just set up a little a little section to pick our level. So we're going to get a, I think that's called a yeah, pie chart. And we'll set our legend and our values as level. And there you see we can isolate our data. And if you haven't used Power BI before, the great thing about it is all your tables will respond to each other. So if I just say, show me ground floor, you'll see that my other table is just reduced in size. Show me carport. And you can see that my area is calculating its total each time. So really powerful. Um, and we're also just gonna create a quick one just for department as well. And we'll just use a donut chart in this case. Cool. And you'll see now we've got our, our areas available as well, or our department. So I can say, I just wanna see my, my external areas. And you'll see everything responds, even the pie chart. So really cool. But what we're here, to, here today to do is look at the floor plans. So we're just gonna move these down. But all I'm doing is setting up a little bit of infrastructure so that when we bring in our floor plan, we can interact with it. Okay, so at this point we need to bring in our Synoptic Designer tool. So we're just gonna import custom visual where the three dots are. And you'll need to download and install this Synoptic panel by OKViz, uh, which is free. And we'll open that and you should get, and it should say it was successful. And you'll get a new icon here for Synoptic panel. So we just click there. And this is our synoptic panel. Uh, what it needs first is some data. So I found if you're working with room number, all you need to do is take room number and put it under category and under measure. And then you need to click on this local maps button and locate your shape file from Power BI, uh, from the synoptic designer. So we'll open that and there's our floor plan. Um, so it's already ready to go. So maybe you wanna make a few little touches before you start. Uh, playing with it entirely. So what we'll do is just select our panel and we'll go to the formatting tab. Uh, let's just check our data colors. So you can change the color that your data is colored as for matched and unmatched. So we'll just pick a, pick like a, a blue of some sort. Cool, um, not the nicest color, but it'll do. Um, you can also pick data labels. And if you've put in the room names, you can actually change your labels as well to that room name. So let's just make our text size, maybe size 35 or maybe 40. Cool. And we'll just make the color, we'll force it to be black. Okay, so we'll just turn off word wrap and we'll turn off enclosed in area. Cool. And then it will just go to the closest point it can find to the room. You'll see at the moment I'm using my room numbers, uh, but I can obviously change that to, uh, to say area name. And because I've written that in the Synoptic Designer, you'll see that now it says the name of the room instead. And let's just put that in the middle of the room. Cool, so now you can see the room tags on your plan as well. Okay, so because this is all connected, um, if I click on one of these rooms, you'll see that my floor plan now responds everywhere to that room, so that, that's really cool, right? You go entrance, well, I think it's cool. Um, you go to carport, driveway, and you can see everything adjusting as we go. Um, but even better than that, if I pick on carport, you'll see that it, hi it highlights all the rooms that relate to carport. And that's because it's looking at the, col at the row and it's finding the room number and it's connecting that with the synoptic design panel there. I can obviously take my elderly area and you can see it's all responding. So my areas are also responding as well. So it's a really quick way to interact with your buildings. And a really cool tool is the slicer. I really like using this one with the floor plans. So if you just take say wall finish as your slicer, and we just say, we want to only look at rooms where the wall is plasterboard. 
And you'll see there we go. We see exactly how many rooms have plasterboard on their wall, and we see how many how much the area is of those rooms as well. Obviously, floor finish might be better if you're dealing with full plans because that really is a surface area. So I can see how much area of timber I have, and I have 57 square meters out of my total, which is uh, 460. So really powerful stuff. Um, so that's really, really it, I guess. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with this. Obviously, floor plans are just one type of drawing you could bring in. You could do sections, you could do axonometrics. Um, I've got like a more polished report I've put together here where I've got two floors that I work with. And obviously, I can go between between levels and it all, it all responds. Um, so yeah, lots of fun. And I found that this has really helped people in my office engage a bit more with the program and see the value of it as architects. So hopefully, it will help you as well. Um, and hopefully the slices will help you look at a way of sort of isolating data sets as well. So I can s just pick a level, for example. And um, the good thing about slices too is that tables will respond to them. So you can see that my pie chart only reflects what is being sliced. So if I, if I pick um, rooms with ceiling plasterboard, you'll see my slicer now only deals with those particular rooms as percentages. Um, so it's a really good way to sort of sub assess your data as well. Um, but that's pretty much it for today. So hopefully that helps. Um, and as I said, you can use sections, axonometrics. As long as you can draw it, you can do it. Um, and obviously you can look at programs that edit shape files like Adobe Illustrator and Inkscape, which is free. Um, and obviously there's more automation via Python and Dynamo in order to convert those shapes with names and areas and data without having to use the manual process, process of the synoptic panel. In future, I might do a more advanced course on how to do that. I'm still figuring that out myself. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Um, hopefully that gave you a new technique you can play with. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And um, if you've got any uh, requests for videos or any comments or feedback, feel free to leave it down below. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, take care, bye.